Hey y'all, in today's video, I am gonna be sharing four delicious crock pot dinner recipes that were all new to us and have easily became new favorites. I know that I sound terrible in today's voiceovers. I am sick, surprise, surprise, but I just wanted to throw that out there before anyone says anything. Uh, but first up, I made an Olive Garden Coffee Cat Pasta e Fagioli Soup. So I'm just kind of giving y'all an overview of all the ingredients I used, but I will go into detail as I'm adding everything into the crock pot. So the very first thing I did was cook up a pound of ground beef. I always like to season mine about halfway through the cooking time with just some onion and garlic powder, salt, and black pepper. Once it's fully cooked, if you see a lot of excess grease, definitely drain that off, but this is such a quick step. I absolutely love how quick ground beef cooks up, so I got that added to the bottom of my crock pot, and then I grabbed a couple stalks of celery and a couple carrots uh, that I peeled. I washed them well, and I diced all of that up, and I was going to throw that straight on top of the ground beef. Now, the recipe does call for a whole onion to be diced and added as well, but if you are new here. I don't cook with onions. It's just who I am. So next, I'm going to grab a can of northern beans and a can of red kidney beans. Rinse and drain those. You'll also need a can of diced tomatoes. I love the red gold chili ready ones. I just recently realized that there is chili powder in them, um, which doesn't typically go with the flavors of this soup, but we love the turnout, so I would definitely do it again. Um, you'll also need a can or a jar of your favorite spaghetti sauce. I'm just going with the Hutts. It is a cheaper one, but we really like it and it works so well in this soup. You'll also need some beef broth. I'm measuring out three cups. You can definitely use a lower sodium version if you want to. I just went with a regular. You'll also need some oregano. The recipe calls for two teaspoons but I was at the bottom of this jar and I just wanted to finish it off so it was maybe a little bit more. I'm also going to add in some dried parsley, just kind of eyeballed that, and then I'm going to season it pretty heavily with some black pepper and salt. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to stir that really well. That way all the seasonings aren't just like floating on top. I'm going to get my lid added on and I cooked mine on high for four hours, but this is definitely something that you can set on low and let it cook all day, making it perfect if you work outside of the house and you want to put something on before work, because this is something that will not overcook. So I've had this crock pot a really long time. It's my first crock pot that I ever owned. And as you can see, it gets super hot. That thing was boiling. Um, it's very important to get to know your crock pots because I have noticed with this crock pot, obviously I have to cook things for like a lesser time. Anyways, um, about 30 minutes before your cooking time is up, you'll want to add in one cup of Dinalini pasta. Now, normally I don't recommend cooking pasta in your crock pot. I have tried it several times and the outcome is never that great. It just kind of changes the texture of the pasta. It's just not very appetizing, but I can say this was the first time that I have ever successfully cooked pasta in the crock pot. It turned out perfect. Um, I guess it was the combination of it being like a small pasta, probably the fact that there's so much broth in there, and just the fact that this crock pot does get so hot to the point it is boiling. Um, but it worked out so good. Like I said, I was just very happy about that. Uh, but as you can see, this is such a beautiful soup. It is very fully loaded. Um, we topped our bowl with some freshly shredded Parmesan cheese and served it with a side of some garlic Texas toast, which is the perfect thing to go with this. But y'all, it was so amazing. There was so much going on in there. The flavors were just so good. Um, I get asked all the time, what is my favorite thing to cook? And honestly, it's probably soups because they're just so cozy and comforting. And like I always say, my kids always end up loving them. Like the stuff in here is stuff they normally wouldn't eat. But when you make it into a soup, they will eat it every single time. It was such a hit. 
Next up, I made a cheesy hash brown casserole with smoked sausage. I know this recipe has been around a long time, but like I said, this was my first time doing it. So I started by spraying my crock pot with some Pam cooking spray, and I'm going to dump out this whole 32 ounce bag of frozen diced hash browns. I did partially thaw them, but I don't think that necessarily matters, but I did season the potatoes. I just did salt, black pepper, and onion powder. Again, if you like onion, feel free to dice one up. Um, here is my package of smoked sausage. There is so many variations out there. Use whatever you feel like. I just typically buy what is on sale, but I am going to thinly slice it up and then cut it into little half circles. That way there will be plenty to go all throughout the casserole. So I was going to get those dubbed straight on top of the potatoes. And then I shredded up an eight ounce block of some sharp cheddar cheese. And I was taking about a cup of that and adding that on top of the sausage. Next, I'm going to grab a can of cream of chicken soup, and I'm going to dump that out into a large measuring cup, or you can do a mix and bowl, doesn't matter. Um, also, if you don't like cream of chicken, I'm sure any cream soup would work well here, but I am going to fill that can up with some milk. I'm using 2%, and I'm going to add that in with the cream of chicken and just mix those two ingredients really well until it is nice and smooth. So, I poured that over top of everything, and I was going to get all of that folded together. I found it easiest to do that with like a spatula. I've noticed sometimes if I use a spoon, it, sometimes it wants to butcher everything up, but I guess it doesn't matter either way. But anyways, I do love that this recipe has very few ingredients. Recipes like that is my favorite. It just makes it so easy. And the turnout was just I can't even. <laughs> but lastly, I've just taken the remaining half cup of cheese, sprinkled that over the top, and then I added a lid, and I'm going to set mine on high, and it took about two and a half hours for me. Anywhere from two and a half to three hours should be perfect, but as you can see, this looks amazing. It is so creamy and cheesy. The only problem I did have is some of that cheese wanted to burn to the side of the crock pot, which didn't affect the flavor at all, but it can make clean up a little bit of a pain. Um, so next time I make this, I would definitely use like a crock pot liner or I would just use my other crock pot that doesn't get as hot. So I did top mine with some parsley just to give it a little bit of color. And I served it with some steamed broccoli that just has some butter on it with some garlic salt and pepper and this meal was absolutely delicious we just loved it we love hash brown casserole anyways but i don't believe i have ever done it with smoked sausage and it just goes together so well it gives it such a nice smokiness and the casserole itself was just perfect love the flavors love the texture definitely a 10 out of 10. On this night, I made some honey garlic chicken thighs. And as you can see, again, very few ingredients. And this recipe was incredible. So you're going to need some boneless, skinless chicken thighs. I can never find that at my local grocery store. But they always have the bone in skin on, which really isn't a problem. I'm going to show y'all how I fix these up. This is the cheapest way to do it. Um, as you can see, the skin tears off so easily. Literally no effort at all. I'm going to flip these on over so that the bone is facing me. And I'm going to take a sharp knife and I'm just cutting the meat away from the bone. Now, if you've watched me for a while, you know I do not have the best knife skills. And even I did not think that this was difficult at all. I'm going to go underneath that bone and there you go. It's out. There's also a little grizzly piece over there that needs to be cut out as well. But after that, that is all that you need to do. Um, if there's like a lot of excess fat, you can trim that off if you want to. It's not necessary, but there you go. A boneless, skinless chicken thigh. So of course I repeat that to all of them. It took very little time and now I have six big pieces of chicken thighs. So I'm going to dump all of that into the bottom of my crock pot and I'm just going to kind of get that spread out a little bit better. And then I'm going to make this sauce that gets poured over the top. So I'm going to measure out a third cup of low sodium soy sauce. I'm also going to measure out a third cup of ketchup. This is just regular tomato ketchup. 
And then I'm also going to do a third cup of honey. I love that all of those ingredients use the same measurement. That way I only had to dirty up one measuring cup. I'm also going to do two big spoonfuls of minced garlic. You could definitely do fresh minced garlic if you wanted to. I know that would make it even better. Um, and then I, lastly, I just did a small splash of apple cider vinegar. And I got that mixed really well. You definitely want to make sure to get that honey broken up evenly. Uh, but I poured that all over the top of the chicken. I added my lid and I cooked mine on high and it only took two hours. I checked the tenderness of it after two hours. I checked it with a meat thermometer and it was perfect. But if you needed a longer cook time, you could do it on low for anywhere from four to five hours, I would say. But here I added a cornstarch slurry, which is two tablespoons of cornstarch and two tablespoons of cold water mixed together. I added the lid back on and I let that cook on high for 15 minutes. And in the past, I've had issues with cornstarch slurries working in the crock pot. But again, this time it worked perfectly. I thought this consistency was absolutely perfect. Um, I'm going to serve this over some white rice. I also think this will be really good over some like fried rice. I was even going to go to our local Chinese restaurant and order some of that to go along with this chicken, but they were closed on this day, sadly, but it was still really good with the white rice. Um, you can top this with sesame seeds to make it look even nicer. I was just feeling lazy this day to be honest but I did top my husband's with some green onions and y'all like I said this recipe truly is incredible the sauce is so good and flavorful and pairs so well with that chicken and the chicken cooks so perfectly I absolutely love chicken thighs especially in a crock pot the meat turned out so juicy and tender and I honestly just cannot wait to make it again Last but certainly not least, I'm going to be making some buffalo chicken sandwiches. Now, I know this is probably the most like basic crock pot recipe out there, and probably everyone knows about it, and that is okay. If that is the case, here is your reminder to make it again. Now, I have done variations of this. I know for sure that I have done something similar with a block of cream cheese. That was really good as well, uh, but I just wanted to do the most simple version. So I threw a whole family size pack of chicken tenderloins in the bottom. I covered it with a packet of ranch seasoning mix and then I just drizzled on some buffalo sauce. I didn't do a certain amount. I just basically wanted to cover the tops because I knew that I could add more later if I needed to. I didn't want to make it overly spicy for my family. So I was giving that a quick mix and again I'm going to cook it on high for two hours. I have problems with getting up like super early to put on the crock pot to cook it on low, so I'm not scared of that high setting. I know that some people say that it's pointless uh, to put things in a crock pot if you're only going to cook it for a couple of hours, and I do understand what you're saying, but I'm just trying to get some good crock pot recipes out there, and yeah, so anyways, I got that shredded up with two forks, and then I tossed in a couple tablespoons of butter and just mixed that in to let it melt, and that... Uh, just a little bit of butter really did make a difference in the flavor. Um, so there you have it. It's not pretty. It looks plain jade and boring, but y'all, it is so, so good. Perfectly cooked chicken in this seasoned, buttery buffalo sauce. I mean, what more can you ask for? I served it on some buttered and toasted buds, and I topped it with some cheese, and I did some ranch dressing on the bud. And the best thing about this is you can do so much with it. The next day, we used the leftovers over nachos, and they turned out equally as amazing. Um, you could use this in pasta dishes. You could do quesadillas, wraps. Um, you could even do it over some baked potatoes. I mean, the options are endless. So it's really nice to find a good recipe that can be used in so many ways. And if you are into meal prep, this is perfect. So I'm telling y'all, this was an epic buffalo chicken sandwich. And I just served it with some Rally's fries that I cooked up in the air fryer. And we just loved this meal. I was very happy with all the recipes in this video. And I hope that anyone out there looking for some more crock pot recipes found at least one thing in this video that looked good to you. Um, if you made it this far in the video, I really appreciate it. I know it was not the easiest thing to listen to. I hate putting out videos when I sound like this, but that is just life. But that's all I got for y'all in today's video. I will see y'all in the next one.